Hi guys, I'm Marcel. Welcome back to The Pulse. Today I'm going to share with you some information from a very exciting Canadian study, a 10-year trial, human clinical trial of vitamin D and its effects on dementia. Matter of fact, this trial showed a 40% improvement over a 10-year period uh, versus the non-vitamin D takers. I feel really bad for the non-vitamin D takers. This is one of those studies that kind of punches you in the gut because you think, oh my gosh, people actually didn't take vitamin D and got dementia, a lot of people. So that that part of it, always I always think about that because I interact with so many people that take vitamins and supplements. And I thought this is really important. This was covered in a video extensively, and I'm gonna share that link below, uh, of Dr. John Campbell, his channel. And he really discusses and explains, and he's equally really excited about this study. Now it was, participants were 71 and older. So you have an older age group that was tested, and it was over a long period of time. Now, I wanna cover a couple things that Dr. Campbell didn't cover because they're unique to things we talk about on this channel, which is the power of human clinical trials, which we're all for. I haven't met anybody that isn't for them. It's just that these six month trials, what could they possibly be telling us? And to me, this is further evidence of that on the vitamin D test. And by the way, I do take vitamin D. I do take the do not age. And Dr. Campbell recommends K2 with D3, which is the one that do not age carries. They also have the magnesium in it, which is good for your bones and joints. But this is a really good approach if you want to be uh, in line and consistent with the results of this 10-year uh, clinical trial. I'm looking at a new study today from Canada, just published uh, in March 2023. And it shows that people that take vitamin D supplement get about a 40% protection against dementia. Now, a few weeks ago, we looked at people taking vitamin D supplement get about a 15 to 18% protection against people that have pre-diabetes developing diabetes. And that accounts for, that applies to about 90, over 90 million people in the United States. So a huge difference. And here we're seeing that there's a 40% protective effect in this study against developing dementia, particularly uh, Alzheimer's disease. And people that are likely to get diabetes are likely to get dementia. So it, it just seems to make perfect sense to give these people extra vitamin D. Now here, here's this study here. So, so the, the blue line is, is uh, people that had vitamin D and the green line is people that didn't have vitamin D. And these are people that survived without getting dementia. So we see a clear difference. And the study was done over 10 years. So we see that people that had uh, no vitamin D, fewer of them survived without developing dementia. Dr. Campbell also discussed another trial, which will also link, this, it's linked on his description as well, uh, concerning a diabetes trial, which also improved people with prediabetes not developing diabetes. So if you're prediabetic, you really should be taking vitamin D. Uh, and if you want to avoid dementia, if it runs in your family, definitely be taking vitamin D every day. Now, I found it really interesting that there was no effect the first year of this study. I don't know if this has to do with the frequency of testing, but even if you look at the longer curve, the separation between the D+, plus, those taking vitamin D and D- minus group, which wasn't, it increased over time. So after two years, there still wasn't significant difference or separation between the two groups. Now you would think dementia will take longer to develop, so it may be a lack of data that causes this separation in the curve as time goes on. However, it still speaks to the point somewhat that you need to take these protocols for a longer period of time. I, I get people commenting, I tried it for two months or I tried it for six weeks and I didn't feel anything. And I'm talking about NMN because that's the one I talk to people about the most. But if you look at the vitamin D study, they didn't get significant results till four or five years into this study. So if you're going to get fundamental improvements, health improvements, and you're going to start a protocol, you really need to have some faith and stick with it. Uh, there's a lot of science behind vitamin D. There's a lot of science behind NMN. So I'm sort of discussing both things because I think this is a kind of a study that we're going to need to see for NMN. 
What we're also going to need to see is what ages are going to benefit. There's so many things that we need to test. Is exercise a factor as well? Did these people sleep well? Did these people eat well? Did these people smoke? How many of them did? So there are a lot of things that you throw in here that that 40% may have actually been much, much higher than 40%. Um, I kind of believe it would be because there's so many fake things out there. So they could be taking some fake vitamin Ds. I'm sure that there are fake vitamin Ds or aged vitamin Ds that have been on the shelf too long, et cetera, et cetera. So there are a lot of things that can impact a study like this and pull those numbers down. It's very exciting to see a number like 40% because you also wonder, were they taking it consistently? Did they forget to take it? Um, did they report properly? And again, which Vitamin D, were they taking? Were they taking D3? Were they taking D2? So it's really exciting when you consider that probably those numbers, goes, those percentages could be made to be much better if you added in some other cofactors as well. Now, I, I made a video recently talking about uh, my dad living to 64 and not living a healthy lifestyle and my uncle living still alive now at 88 and lived a much better lifestyle. So these things happen over time. They take a lot of time to take place. It's great that people can experience benefits when they start to take something, some vitamins or, or things like NMN especially, which can have for many people, for most people, short-term benefits. But again, I caution, if you're not getting those short-term quick benefits, you may really need NMN more than most because it, you may have some conditions that need a lot more time. And again, looking at this study, it does express that things do take time to have an impact uh, in the cellular and neurological levels. Now, I also want to talk about the fact that people were over 71 and again, kind of discuss how this relates to NMN. Anecdotally, I've noticed a trend where older people that are taking NMN experience a quick boost, where younger people, it takes either more time or they don't notice anything right away. And I would have to assume that as we age, since our NAD levels go down so low, that the older you are, the lower your NAD levels are, and the more you're going to experience that boost. So this may also somewhat explain the vitamin D curve expanding as these people aged because they're now 81, right? So after their 10 years, or they were at least 71. So 71 and older was the age group. So as they're aging, you're experiencing a bigger difference in vitamin D, which becomes more and more essential apparently as we age. So we could be seeing uh, something similar along those lines with NMN, where people that are older need it even more. So a lot of people ask me, what age should I start? I think general wellness should start at any age, as early as possible, intervene as early as possible. And man, I still like the 38, 40-year-old uh, range. I think that's as about, about as early as I would recommend it, unless there are extenuating health circumstances where you've gotten tested for NED and your levels are low, or you had COVID or long COVID. Um, there are some cases where I think NMN can be a huge boost for younger people as well under cer certain cases. And I certainly would uh, do this under doctor's supervision for multiple reasons, so that doctors are informed of what's going on, but also you know, to be safe for your health. Uh, I would recommend anybody taking on even a vitamin D regimen, discuss it with your doctor, so that he can test you before and after. I think this study and the video that Dr. John Campbell did is absolutely fantastic. It's must-see YouTube. And uh, so check out his video. I look forward to talking to you guys again real soon. Thanks for watching.